So I decided to make a D&D class for the Bloodborne Hunter. I've recently started playing Bloodborne, and I'm really enjoying it. I beat a few bosses, and I'm starting to understand the game. I think I've played enough to make this class, so let's get started. Just so you know, this is my first time making a whole ass class for Dungeons and Dragons, so please be patient with me. Your hunter's hit points are defined by the following features. You start with 10 HP, plus your constitution modifier. At higher levels, you gain 1d10, or 6 HP, plus your constitution modifier. You have the following proficiencies. Light armor and medium armor, simple weapons and martial weapons, uh, a set of tools, you pick one, smith's tools or thieves' tools, and your saving throws are dexterity and wisdom. As your equipment, you start with the following equipment in addition to the stuff granted by your background. 1. You choose between leather armor and two trick weapons of your choice, or B. Studded leather armor and one trick weapon of your choice. For your tools, you can, or for your, your backpack, you can either get a dungeoneer's pack or an explorer's pack, and then you can also get thieves' tools or smith's tools. The hunter has the following class features, which I will explain in detail when we get there. At first level, you get the fighting style and the blood is fuel. At second level, you get trick weapon proficiency. At third level, you get hunting style. At fourth level, you get an ability score improvement or a feat. At fifth level, you get extra attack. At sixth level, you get another ability score improvement. At seventh level, you get hunting style feature. At eighth level, you get an ability score improvement or a feat. At ninth level, you get dodge and duck. At tenth level, you get your third hunting style feature. At 11th level, you get another extra attack. At 12th level, you get another ability score improvement. At 13th level, you get dodge and duck, level 2. At 14th level, you get another ability score improvement. At 15th level, you get a hunting style feature. 16th is an ability score improvement. 17th is blood as fuel, level 2. 18th is a hunting style improvement. 19th is an ability score improvement. And 20th level, you get something called Eldritch Horror. The first level grants you the fighting style feature, which functions just like it would on a fighter or some other classes. However, the other feature, Blood is Fuel, is much different. When you take damage, you can regenerate up to half of that if you deal damage within the end of, before the end of your turn. Half the damage you do is regenerated as HP, up to a maximum of half the damage you took. Yes, this does mean you would have to do double what your opponent did to you to regenerate all the health that you can, but I didn't want this feature to be overpowered. At level 17, the attack's regenerative capabilities are no longer halved, and you regenerate full HP from every attack. However, you still can only gain back half your HP. So an example of this would be if you took 20 points of damage, and you did 20 points of damage, then you would regain 10 of your points of health, but if you did more than 20 points of damage, you could still only regain 10 points of health. The second level grants you Trick Weapon Proficiency, which allows you to transform a Trick Weapon as a free action. See my other videos on trick weapons if you want to know what those are. The third level grants you your first level in hunting style. You have three styles, Strength of Arms, Skillful Knife, and Eldritch Beast. See the following sections for more details. The hunting style you choose grants features at third level, then again at seventh, tenth, fifteenth, and eighteenth. When you reach fourth level, and again at sixth, eighth, twelfth, fourteenth, sixteenth, and nineteenth level, you can increase an ability score of your choice by two, or two ability scores of your choice by one. As normal, you can't increase ability score over twenty using this feature. Oh, and you can also get a feat if you would like. At fifth level, you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack action on your turn, and you gain a third attack at level eleven. Beginning at 9th level, you gain the feature Dodge and Duck, which allows you to use your reaction to have an attacker's damage against you once per round, provided that you can see the attacker, and you can reroll a dexterity saving throw once per short rest. Both of these features can be used twice per round and per short rest, respectively, at 13th level. So you can do it once at 9th level and twice at 13th level. At 20th level, you have experienced so much horror and no longer phases you. You can no longer be frightened, and you can see invisible creatures with a successful perception check. Now it's time for the subclasses. Strength of Arms gives you advantage on rolls to keep a keep creature grappled at 3rd level. Normally it's a contest roll, but with this feature you roll twice and take the highest roll, while your opponent only rolls once. At 7th level, you gain the ability to reroll one strength-related check per short rest. At 10th level, you have become so strong, you roll a 1d4 plus your strength modifier for your unarmed attacks, rather than just using a 1 and adding your strength modifier to determine the damage. At 15th level, you can use weapons that aren't light as though they were light weapons, as long as they're one-handed. You can use like a longsword as if it were a light weapon. 
but you can't use like a two-handed weapon as if it were a light weapon. At 18th level, you become a master of strength, and your strength increases by 4. Your strength point maximum is also increased to 24. For the skillful knife subclass, at 3rd level, climbing no longer costs you extra movement. At 7th level, when you are forced to take a dexterity saving throw to avoid damage, you instead take half on a failed save and no damage at all on a successful save. At 10th level, opportunity attacks against you are made with disadvantage. At 15th level, difficult terrain no longer costs you extra movement. At 16th or 18th level, sorry, you are incredibly skilled and your dexterity score increases by 4 and your dexterity point maximum also increases to 24. For the Eldritch Beast subclass, at 3rd level you learn a ritual that can create a bond between you and your weapon. Once you are bonded to a weapon, it cannot be knocked from your hand unless you are incapacitated. If it is on the same plane of existence as you, you can summon it to your hand instantly. You can only have two bonded weapons at a time. At 7th level, you do an extra 1d4 necrotic damage for every melee attack you make. At 10th level, magic resistances to your, to your attacks are ignored. At 15th level, you become immune to any magical effects that would put you to sleep. At 10th level, you become accustomed to the horrors of the world and your wisdom score increases by 4. Your wisdom point maximum also increases to 24. So, what did you guys think? I know that it's a lot, but I hope that I made the class understandable. Thanks for watching, and I hope you like this class. Give me suggestions about how to, how to improve it down below. See y'all next time.